What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Alexis Maurice, and you know what time it is. It's time for us to discuss all things Real Housewives of Atlanta. So go ahead and pull yourself a glass of wine, honey. Ladies, put on some lipstick, pull up a chair, because it's about time for us to discuss episode two of season eight, Real Housewives of Atlanta. I'm going to go ahead and take my first sip. Little sippy sip, little poury pour, mm -hmm, little drink a drink. While I'm taking mine, you go ahead and like this video, share it on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, Snapchat, chat, chat, all that stuff, because you know I'm trying to come all the way on up. Portia. Girl, you so dumb. Like, <laughs> girl, you dumb. Like, you dumb. Dumb, 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 dumb. And this is exactly why I say your ass don't deserve a peach. So, before I go in, let me let me start off with the positive. Portia, congratulations on the success of your Go Naked hairline. Portia, congratulations on you launching your lingerie line. So Portia decides that she wants to have a damn sip and see for everybody to come meet Duke, her new man. Now, if someone sends me an invitation, I, I don't care if it's an Evite uh, invitation in the mail, if it's uh, a text message talking about come to my sip and see to meet my new boo, child, I'm going to delete that text message, I'm going to throw the invitation in the damn trash, and I'm going to delete the email and go empty my trash box after I delete the email. Girl, ain't nobody got time for no damn sip and see for us to meet your man, especially after you being with him for only one month, okay? So, Portia decides she wants to have a sip and see for everybody to come see Duke. Duke walked through the door like, okay, wow, all of this for me? Thanks, boo. Or whatever. She want to give him a trophy for her most valuable man or player or what. Girl, okay, I ain't going to say it was completely dumb. The concept and the idea was cute. You know, it was cute. You know, you having a little... Thing, but I would do something like that for someone once we've been together for like a year. So I'm doing like a year anniversary party. But it seems like everyone is having some serious reservations about Portia dating this guy. Her sister Lauren basically said, I'm not the girl. If you want to call me and chit chat about your boo, I'm not that girl. I got bigger fish to fry. I'm pregnant. Oops, by the way, I forgot to tell you. That's basically what she decided to tell her when she was sick. Bitch, I'm pregnant. Her staff they had some things to say about her being with this guy and Portia not being focused. Basically, your staff is telling you that your dumb ass can't multitask because they said when you're in a relationship or things going down, you completely shut down. Girl, your staff is trying to say they can't find you. Where's Portia? I've been calling her. I've been texting her. I've been emailing her. I've been direct messaging on Instagram because that seems to be the only thing that she checks on a regular basis. Where the hell is Portia? Don't nobody know where Portia is. Now catch this juice. The real tea is, girl, when old dude who worked for Portia, the help, when he's sitting up at a party and he over there talking to Phaedra and Candy and Cynthia and Lauren and all them other people on the staff talking about Portia boyfriend like to be with prostitutes, porn stars, and transgender. Girl, I about fell out on the damn floor when he said that. First of all, that was disrespectful. That should not have been, they shouldn't even have been talking about that at the event, let alone on national TV for everybody can see. That's the reason his dumb ass probably dumped dumb ass Portia. Y'all sitting here spilling all his tea, talking about he like to hang around with prostitutes, transgenders, and porn stars and stuff like that. That was so damn rude. How dare you come up in my house and eat all my food and all my damn snacks and drink up all my damn wine and my um alcohol and my Kool-Aid. Talking about my man like to hang around with transgenders, porn stars, and prostitutes. That was so disrespectful. But honey, if I was there, I would have been sipping that tea just along with everybody damn else. <laughs> So switching gears for just a moment, I am optimistic after tonight's episode that hopefully Candy and Portia 
not Portia, Candy and Phaedra can kind of put the pieces back together. I'm so proud of them because they were doing their work. They took Iyama's advice and they had, they did the work tonight. They did the work. They cried. They read. You know, they did everything that needed to be done to heal. So I was glad to see that the two women came and sat down. By the way, Candy, you are beautiful. Your hair is laid. You got that glow. You nice little baby bump. You're real cute this season. But anywho... I was glad to see that two grown women decided to come down. So they had their caddy moment when, you know, Phaedra revealed to her that the reason that she kind of was a little upset with Candy was because, girl, why you hide my man's stuff in your house? And you could tell Candy was kind of taken back just a little bit. But come on, Candy, you had to know that that probably would bother Portia. I mean, bother Phaedra. But the shade is, Phaedra's take the way that she found out about it was somebody came up to her in the grocery store asking them, can, hey, girl, when you going to sell Apollo stuff? I'm trying to get that four wheel. I'm trying to get that dirt bike for my child for Christmas or whatever. Yes, it's second hand, but girl, I can still use it. That probably somebody who Carlos, them producers of that show, got to walk up to Phaedra when she was in the supermarket, down to the wholesales, down to the Walmart, down to the Target. Oh, I need you to go up to Phaedra and, and tell her that Candy got her shit, got her man shit. So Phaedra kind of revealed that she was a little taken back and she was a little upset about her. Like, you know, I introduced y'all to Apollo, but you're supposed to be my friend. You're supposed to be riding down with me and my man in jail and y'all got his stuff. I feel like y'all taking his side. Candy's whole thing was, girl, when me and you were together, hey, oh, hey, girl, oh, girl, oh, you know, all this fake stuff, this fake Christian stuff. But then you get with Nene and you get with Cynthia out of all people and saying that, you know, Phaedra betrayed me and this, this, this. Girl, go to the source. That's the type of bitch that I always am. If there's a problem, me and you need to sit down and we need to talk. We need to short sort this stuff out. Say what you got to say. I'm going to say what I got to say. And let's see where we can go from here. Okay? And I applaud the two women for coming down, coming together and said that they cried. So I'm optimistic. The only other hurdle that we really got to face now is just this whole... um. Phaedra owes Todd this $5,000 or how much ever that he owed Todd. Phaedra, girl, go ahead and cut Todd a check because we know he's trying to build his empire. So Mama Joyce and everybody won't say that Candy tried to help him. What I need to know is whose name this restaurant is going to be in, honey. Is it going to be in Todd's name? Is it going to be in Candy's name? But what I am not here for, what I am not here for, honey, is Miss Don Juan. You see, and see, that's the problem with this show. This is my personal opinion. With the help and friends. There's a blurred line on this show. Because y'all remember a couple of seasons back when King was first, you know, brought onto the show and they had to blow up with the whole Bailey Agency's people. These helps, they need to know their place. Okay? So Don Juan, listen. It's not like I dislike you or anything like that, but I think you overstepped just a little bit too much. Now, granted, I know you and Candy are friends, but right now your role on the show is the help. It is not to be the friend. All that shit you was given, all of that, yeah, yeah, that, 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 bitch, sit your ass down because ain't nobody asked you all of that or whatever. You ain't had to go in on Phaedra in that whole situation. First of all, it was none of your business. When I saw your little ass tiptoeing down the hallway... Or whatever. I knew you was up to no good once Phaedra had left. But you come, does she know about this? Does she know about that? What did she expect you to do? Then, bitch, fall back. Okay? Because that is not your place. That's just my personal opinion. Same thing with um with Portia's guy. The guy who was doing all that yicky that. Talking about the transgenders and stuff. That was inappropriate. And that is not your place. I just feel that the help just need to stay as the help. Be my friend off camera. But right now, I just need you to just to be working for me. Go down, go down and go get me some old Panera Bread, a salad from Panera Bread or something like that. That's all I'm saying, Don Juan. But I still love you, girl. Hey. This whole Peter and Cynthia situation, girl, it, it's, it makes my head hurt. Again, Cynthia ain't had no business. Letting the whole world know that she is not attracted to her hand. I mean, I appreciate you open up the dialogue and you starting the discussion, honey. But that's not a discussion that America needs to have with you on your marriage. Um, 
like and Mel, y'all, this whole city thing make my head hurt. It really, really do. Like, I just think it was just such a bad move for you to let everybody know that you're not attracted to your husband. Uh, it ain't like he ugly. But she said she's not attracted to him with his clothes off. So maybe it's a completely different story, child, once he taking clothes off. I don't know if he got crust. I don't know if he got blue stains or, you know, he a smurf up in there. I don't know what it is, but this whole situation just, just makes my hair hurt. And this episode, we were introduced to Miss Regine, Mrs. Tootie, the um Hollywood, what the king you say, Hollywood um legend. What did she call her? Hollywood vintage? I don't know. What, what the hell did King call her? Anywho, Kim Fields was introduced to her, uh, introduced to the world tonight on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. And I like it. I like Kim Fields on the Housewives of Atlanta. I felt that she had a strong debut. It wasn't dramatic or whatever the case may be. Now, it was shady because Miss King was like, Hollywood has been so good to us, girl. <laughs> Kim was like, oh, oh, okay. Hollywood's been good to me, honey. Kim Fields, you know, I'm, I'm here for her. I like to see what she's bringing. One thing I like is the fact that she's married or whatever. This show is the Real Housewives of Atlanta. So I think they needed to bring someone else on the show who is married. So I'm optimistic to see what she's going to contribute. She seems like she's going to be that level-headed girl. Remember, Cynthia used to be that middle girl, that middle woman, that neutral territory. But once her and Nene fell apart, she just, that backbone just sprouted up or whatever the case may be. So Kim Fields, Hollywood royalty. That's what she called her. So I'm looking forward to see what you bring on this season of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. That's about it. That's all that really happened tonight. So I guess I'll catch y'all next week.